there comes a point in the portrait where you kind of want to throw your hands up and say, forget it, I'm taking this thing down and um, you know, I'll just do something else. And that's okay. In fact, I encourage my students to do a lot of that. Lots of starts, stops, take them away, begin again. In this case, I really like what's going on um, in the lower part of the portrait. I've gotten that more to my liking and I've been working on it longer. And now I can see that if I cover this part of the portrait, I kind of have two drawings going on. I have one drawing going on that's larger and I have another drawing going on that's smaller. So because there's so much more work that's been done and achieved in the lower part, I'm going to make my corrections in the upper part. I overcompensated, I made the cranium too big. You may remember that I said something about that earlier. And so I need to diminish all of this and that's easily done. I'm just gonna push the background in, bring it in like so. I am going to bring it on down this way. See how I'm chiseling out? Remember that chiseling idea. We're gonna chisel out that cranium. These transitions need to be a little softer. We're going to show a little more bone here. That'll make the head turn. Got a little hair there that we're going to uh, imply. I'm going to come in. I've got to have a value change here. I'm going to come in, bring this value down on the neck. And I've got to strengthen this shadow. This is all a part of the redraw. Just think of all the finishing detailing as a part of the redraw, defining that neck tendon going there. Cast shadow needs to be a little more solid. Just doing those changes made a huge difference. It's amazing sometimes uh, what a difference you can make with just a few marks. I like this part of the portrait. It's challenging. Um, but I can see big differences taking place with just uh, a few marks here and there. I'm just going to kind of come in here and define that ear a little more. I have it set too low, a little too large. It takes such a long time to look and to finally see. And I'm really frustrated by that. And my goodness, I'm a professional. I do this for a living. But it's like a puzzle. We're trying to sort out all these pieces, these shapes, these little um, shapes and how they fit together. And now what I'm gonna do in the part of my redraw is squint my eyes down and once again, make a statement about those eye sockets and kind of unify everything because I'm pretty sure I need to move those eyes down. Remember when I said that the top of the um, portrait looked like a different portrait than the in the mouth. So you kind of have to pick the area that you're the happiest with and go with it. It means that everything has to come down. If the top of the head moved, so then to mess the sockets, of course. And you've probably noticed by now how I can add and subtract and change, lift and move. It's really a lot like painting. Working in charcoal this way is a lot like painting. And in fact, this is something that painters need to do and often do in order to stay in practice. This is how we teach ourselves to see. And a lot of times, this is more difficult actually than painting. Once again, it's time to step back, take a look at the drawing. So just bringing in the background Going ahead, moving the eye sockets has made this incredible difference and it gives me the confidence to go forward. And I want to come in here now and just make some changes with the eyebrows, moving them down a little bit more. I'll just rub the kneaded eraser over. This is a very painterly approach to this drawing. Just rubbing that over a little bit, coming in here making just a little bigger statement with that piece of light that comes through, which I really like. I don't want it to get it too light though. And then I'll make a transition there. And then I'm switching to brushes. I am a painter, and so it's natural for me to use paint brushes, but they do a beautiful job, and this is a Sable Filbert. They do a beautiful job of just softening or blending these transition areas. 
So I'm just going to rub that across there. This is a lot of fun. This is the good stuff. Just softening that. Don't want to get rid of it. We're just softening that a little bit. Also here, make a little circular motions coming through. I can use this as an eraser too because there is some light bouncing up here. So this, um, this bounced light, which is very subtle, but it does give shape to the chin. And I'll just take this and like an eraser, I'll lift that and then touch it, touch, touch, touch. It's very subtle. This is quite like painting. And then I'll come back in with the charcoal and define that edge. Just the neck is a little darker there. There's a little cleft there. This little one. And then I'll strengthen that tendon, just come on down, and that neck. And then this is, there's a stronger shadow. The shadows are always stronger as they're close to what's casting them. And then the light infuses that shadow as we move away from the object that's casting the shadow. Come back up here, and then this edge where the jaw turns back and we have a plane turning back along with this shadow of beard. It's just a wee bit darker there. Pushing that back a bit. You know, and I darkened the neck earlier so that it would be a darker value than the shirt and began to make a little bit of a statement here about the shadow the shirt going around the back. And I'm just going to gently drag this, make a little line. You know, line's important in a drawing. And isn't it funny, we're just now adding the line. People try to draw lines too early, typically. I'm one of them. Now I'm going to mass in this shadow shape, which will make the collar come forward, we hope. Mass in this cast shadow that comes across this cast shadow. This all kind of gets lost into the background. Be a little more mysterious now. It's a little darker spot there. We don't want to get too fussy with these details, but some amount of them will give dimension and form to the drawing. You may be wondering, wonder why she doesn't just take photographs and work from them. And sometimes I do. But I do want to stress that this, is, this really is an amazing learning tool. This is an amazing tool. This is how we learn to really see. And you'll work from your photographs so much better if you've done work from life. Just kind of make some quick little marks here not that important, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's a little indication here. Buttons with cast shadows. Squinting the eyes down will help us to, as always, simplify these things. There's a beautiful little line that kind of whips up here. And now this line, this is a chance to give just a little indication of some line quality. It's not that important. Just a little fancy stuff. There, it's fun. Cast shadows. And you know, working on this kind of thing gives us a chance to kind of get away from the seriousness of the um, portrait itself. A little more pleasurable. Okay, here we go. We're going to push this edge a bit. I want this edge to be soft and sort of lost there. Same thing here. I'm just going to drag that across. 
Here I'm going to use this like an eraser, coming around from the neck, pulling that down. Isn't that nice? Mm. Pretty. Now I'm hoping I'm not getting too light there. I'm squinting my eyes down. Ooh, I am getting too light there. So what I'll do is just gently, I've still got the forms there. It won't destroy them, but it will alter them. If I'll just come across, unify that a little bit, darken that down. It's still there though. I just don't want that to be too noticeable. This is a little heavier, more distinct. I've been just dying to get to this little detail all along. I must do it now. It's just such a treat. And I want this to be really bright right there. Mm-hmm. There we go. I want this to be kind of bright. I'm making, overstating it. Let me do it this way. So we don't want to fool around with that too much. There's other things to do. Lift this out. This needs to be quite a bit brighter as it comes down. This can be brighter. Just a few notes we'll do here. We don't want to get too carried away. A little wrinkle or two to indicate the light moving across the shoulders. Little gestural marks. And here. Make the form pop a little bit. This is another soft brush. I'll just touch that edge. It'll lift all that. Now all this has to be sprayed afterwards and you need to be very careful about this to protect it. When you get it the way you like it, then you just take it out, spray it with fixative. Make, sh make sure you use uh, archival fixative for whatever you do. 